Good evening, Yorktown, and welcome to the town board meeting uh, for our work session on August 9th, 2022. If everyone could please rise, and Councilman Tom Diana will lead us in the Pledge of Allegiance in a moment of silence. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Could we please bow our heads? and give thanks to the wonderful men and women who serve our country and protect our freedoms and us daily and also to our first responders who are out there day and night that keep us safe daily in our great town. Thank you. Amen. Amen. Great job there, Councilman. Thank you, Supervisor. We'll go with introductions. Why don't you guys start with those in person, and then we'll go virtual. Good evening, everyone. Maura Weisletter, Deputy Town Clerk. Tom Diana, Deputy Supervisor, Councilman. Councilman Ed Lachterman. Sergio Esposito, Councilman. Good evening, Luciana Howitt, Councilwoman. Good evening, Dave Paganelli, Superintendent of Highways. Supervisor Matt Slater, and we have with us our town attorney, Adam Rodriguez. Councilman Diana, did we hear back from our town engineer regarding the first item on tonight's agenda? We did. Um, one second. He is not going to be here. So either we hold it or we... He's coming later. So maybe we'll move it to the end of the uh, of the agenda. Yeah. Uh, so then we'll welcome our, uh, look at that, we're quickly catching up on time. Yes. Uh, we'll welcome the next presentation, 800 East Main Street. Uh, we'll welcome Janet and Mark and their team. Uh, this is a proposed redevelopment of the contractor registry property. Uh, if you, they're going to tell you where it is, but in case you don't, it is uh, at the corner of basically uh, 6N and Route 6. Uh, this is just a, uh, a presentation to the town board. We've had these conversations before with uh, public presentations, um, and I just want to make sure that we're clear. Uh, this is their first presentation to the town board. Uh, this is for them to get feedback from the town board. Uh, and this is the beginning of that uh, overall process. But uh, we do not have a petition in place at this point in time. Uh, and I think it's important that the town board uh, has the courtesy of hearing the presentation, hearing the presentation, and providing feedback to uh, these potential applicants. So with that, I'll turn it over to Mark. So we're not getting approved tonight, Mike, sorry. <laughs> <laughs> Good evening, uh, Mr. Supervisor, members of the town board. My name is Mark Weingarten. I'm a partner in the law firm of Del Bello, Dinellen, Weingarten, Wise, and Wiedeker. And it's my pleasure to be here this evening representing AMS Acquisitions, LLC, in connection with its proposal to develop the 35 and a half acre site located at 800 East Main Street, Yorktown, formerly known as the Contractors Register site, as noted by the supervisor. Mm -hmm. I'm joined tonight uh, from the uh, team at AMS. We have with us Michael Mitnick, uh, over here in the second row, as well as Ryan Sutherland and uh, Raymond Hadea. We also have with us our architects from Perkins Eastman. You'll hear from them shortly, uh, represented by co-managing principal Stuart Lax and uh, Alejandro Geraldo. We do have a presentation and there will be pictorial renderings. I'm just going to give you a little bit of background before we turn it over to them. First, as a matter of background with regard to AMS, it's a real estate investment firm focused on the acquisition and development of prime real estate locations in the tri-state area. It was founded a little more than 10 years ago by Michael Mitnick and Abraham Abadi. AMS has built a portfolio of development projects in all asset classes throughout New York City and has also acquired approximately three quarters of a million square feet of Class A office space in Connecticut. In recent years, AMS shifted its focus to suburban housing markets in Westchester and New Jersey. It is now in various stages of development of more than 3,500 luxury apartments and townhomes in Yonkers, Buchanan, and now we hope Yorktown. In sum, AMS is one of the fastest growing real estate companies in our region. 
with more than a billion dollars of completed transactions and now owns well in excess of a million square feet of real estate and continues to add to its portfolio. And I say that not by mention of trying to brag about our client, but to say that if they come here and they are welcome here and you like their investment, they are very capable of pulling this project off. We want to thank you for the opportunity to allow us to come this evening and share our vision for this much needed repurposing of this vacant commercial property within your town. Our proposal for the 35 acre site consists of 200 luxury multifamily apartments and 50 for, for sale townhomes, all restricted to owners 55 years of age and older. So it's all senior housing, no school children. We want to get that right out front and that is our proposal, 250 in total. You will soon see a design which maintains over 15 acres of open space and ties the new neighborhood into the park-like setting of the surrounding area. 383 parking spaces, the majority of which are shielded from view as they are located beneath the buildings. Upscale amenities are included, including a handful of guest suites for resident visitors only that we'll discuss with you. And our proposal will require zoning relief. So that's important. We need town board approval for that as it does not conform to the current OB2 zoning district for the commercial property. The vacant site, just like numerous vacant or partially off, uh, occupied office parks in our region, is in need of repurposing in the face of a very weak office market. This type of repurposing is happening throughout our county, and I have personally been involved in the necessary repurposing of millions of square feet of underutilized commercial space in recent years. Some may consider this unfortunate, but is a fact of the times, and it is better not to have a vacant property, but a property that is on the tax rolls and performing. We believe this project has significant benefits for the town. As I mentioned, it will return a vacant site to productive status. It will generate significant net property tax benefits for both the town and the school district without adding school children because of our limiting the proposal to 55 and over housing. It will create numerous construction jobs and activities. The local businesses, the small businesses, will love the increase in sales generated from our construction workers. Delis and restaurants love our projects for the period they're being built. Finally, and very importantly, it will create a more diverse housing stock in your community, a place for empty nesters to downsize and relocate from their single family homes, yet still be able to stay in a place worthy of their senior years nearby. Snowbirds, for example, particularly love the ability to live in an apartment or townhome nearby, the home where they raise their family, or maybe spending the winter elsewhere. Divorcees have a place to live nearby the family home, making visitation and staying connected much easier on the family. And even more importantly, bringing more people with income to live in your village, shop in your community, and pay taxes without adding school children. This development will also strengthen the remaining commercial tax base of your community and will provide people to be customers of those remaining businesses. We have been priv privileged to be involved in numerous luxury rental and for sale projects in your neighboring communities such as Somers and Ossining and others and we'll be happy to share those experience with you in the coming process if it is something that you desire to engage in a discussion about. So at this point I'd like to turn it over to our architects led by Stuart Lax I'm going to take you through the pictorial presentation and show you a little bit more about exactly what we're planning. Thank Great. you. Thank you, Mr. Weingarten. Okay. <laughs> Is that slang for not really? <laughs> I'm just admiring his um, laptop sticker. Oh, it's true. Mm -hmm. Old people are cool. <laughs> I like it. Actually, Carrie told Cal and I that we're too old and too lame to be doing social media. Too old and too lame. Right. Hmm, that's so, interesting. Yes. So if you had one that said old people are lame, <laughs> she would probably like that. No, it's actually um, 
Nick, a town hall right now, but I need a code. Yeah, okay. If you, even if you ended your Zoom set, your, yeah, your yeah, stream, yeah. not your Zoom session, if you ended your stream session, then it would pop up with the code, then he yeah. would be able to go back in I and have, then you could go back yeah, in. Yeah, see, I'm only hooked up to here through this. So I'm going to have to, once I try to log in from here. Because you're not going to be able to see both um, the, right. the Zoom, your, your uh, projection and their projection. You won't be able to see both. It's one or the other. You want to send us the invite, invite for Zoom? We can give you my, I can give you my email. I didn't yeah. set this up. That's why so I'm now I'll turn left to like coming up at the con. If you go left to go to the Civic Center, it's a problem. Left there. Have to go I might be able to do it from here. There's a building there. Yeah. Little things. That, where was that? Am I looking at the right place? Yeah. Pick up the hill. That's oh, right. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Mm -hmm. yeah. Yep. I have to sign off the end. But you're looking at Google. <coughs> so you're working tomorrow. Doesn't look like that anymore. You call me in the morning. Very close. More than that. Huh? It's a spin. It's literally across the street from Jefferson Village. Why not? Because you know what? We're, 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 we're diversifying our housing stock. We're not giving anybody any. Um, we're diversifying from 55 and over. But what that does, does well, what it does though is it, it opens up some of the regular housing stock with people. Right. Oh, that's, a, that's true. They can move. Too. That's a good point. Well, I usually don't lie. When I make we can't comment. say he had a good point. Don't say he had no. a good point. No, don't do that. No. Please. <laughs> He'll drive us crazy. <laughs> Council, uh, I'm Stuart Lax with Perkins Eastman, our principal with Perkins Eastman, and this is my partner Alejandro Gallardo. Um, we've got a brief presentation on the proposed project at 800 East Main, and uh, really just a, an introduction. The site uh, adjacent to the Taconic Parkway. Uh, you can see uh, it's really at the um, northeast corner of the intersection between Route Six. And, uh, and the, and the uh, Taconic, uh, adjacent to the State Park, uh, just down the road from Jefferson Valley and the, and the mall. Um, the site itself is a little over 35 acres, and about 30% of it, 467, call it 470,000 square feet currently developed. Um, you can see there the white line is uh, the access point, the, the driveway that leads up, uh, sort of branches off of Route 6 heading west and then spirals into the site. Um, just for, for context, uh, some uh, local landmarks within uh, a mile or less of the site, and you can see uh, the lightly green hatched space is the, is the site itself and then the adjacent state park. Sir, could you get a little closer to the microphone, please? Yeah. Thanks. You're welcome. Uh, this site, uh, this slide shows uh, on the site, there are a number of areas uh, in the site with steep slope, um, uh, yellow and orange, um, and, and uh, represent different levels of slopeness, and we've, as you'll see in our design, we've tried to be cognizant of that and respect some of the natural topography on the site. And then, and Alejandro will speak about this a little bit further. Um, the whole site is about a half a mile north to south. Uh, north in this image is to the left. Um, and that represents in terms of uh, for the um, senior population that we're envisioning living here, um, sort of walking distances. So again, we've tried to make this pedestrian friendly uh, to encourage people to move about the site. You'll see there are different um, uh, fitness and amenity uh, activities um, that we're showing on the site. 
So I guess the, the, for, for us, the most important part of this is, is how we approach the site and how, how we approach the, the, uh, the project. So the main driver of this project is to create a community, sense of community. And we believe in senior living projects or active adult, 55 plus, or any kind of senior living project. The, uh, the concept of community and socialization is fundamental. So uh, for us, the way we try to address the site, again, is to start by looking into key elements into the design, in starting with the arrival, the, uh, uh, how we generate social confluence, and how we develop a community that actually is walkable and pedestrian in nature, being in this type of site, which is you know, absolutely uh, b beautiful. And how we develop the, the, uh, the plan and showcase the community in a sequence, uh, sequencing process uh, uh, on the, uh, from an arrival again up until you get to your uh, resident home. So there's several elements in these communities that we developed that uh, can be designed uh, around the campus. In this property specifically, we're looking into how we create the connection with the uh, indoors, as well as the, uh, how we develop the parking and the vehicle, um, the parking, uh, parking for vehicles and also the uh, transportation of, of services within the campus, but in the perimeter of the campus. So we leave the center area for uh, pedestrian use only and activities. Uh, always looking for how we develop the elevations, the different uh, levels. We know we wanna try to maintain uh, grade on the side that uh, allows for seniors to walk freely without having to have too many uh, disruptions as stairs or ramps and so forth. And, and definitely looking into, again, maintaining a separation between the vehicles and the pedestrian uh, and, the, and the residents of the community. So the main goal here, again, is to develop a sense of community. And again, and how we, do, how we accomplish that is by developing a certain series of uh, spaces in here. So for that, we, we also look at the, how we make the, the site um, how we balance the site between the green and the open space versus the, the built environment. So as you can see in this slide, we have several different options that we look into it and, and try to see what is the right approach. And you look at the, la on the lower right corner, we have this larger site that was actually developed in conjunction with the uh, developer, trying to look for a unique and a very special community. Meaning we're trying to maintain the connection with the adjacent uh, park maintaining that, creating that central grand space and orienting the buildings to maximize that central space and again, um, minimizing the impact on the site. Also placing the buildings on the site in a way that they go um, along the contour lines, meaning that uh, we're trying to disrupt the site at the minimum possible. So this is it. Um, this is the overall concept for the, for the project. So as you can see here, we have a, a 35 acre site where we develop a couple different areas, but if you, with your attention to the centerpiece in here, it's actually a uh, clubhouse element, building, that actually is gonna serve the community as a, as a whole. But what we're trying to develop there is a series of functions that we're gonna explain in a moment, but it's a core and center of the community. Uh, the community is divided in two major areas. On the right side, you see that uh, the water body and that uh, water feature in the center and the big lawn, we're developing a series of buildings that as you arrive in the community, you see there's, there's a, a more residential feel and scale uh, we actually didn't want to develop a series of large buildings, but a series of small buildings that we're gonna describe in a moment. Um, we should, yeah, no, I was gonna say, we should just uh, point out, just sort of. Okay. Yeah, I'm I'm more of a pointer in, but you'll see this is the, the location of the existing access drive, and we plot that in, and so as Alejandro was saying, it's, it's smaller scale buildings is what you see at first as you come in, so that you're not overwhelmed by the um, some of the other scale buildings within the site and make it more welcoming. And I also feel like that those buildings are easier to adjust to the topography. Instead of trying to make big cuts, we develop a series of buildings that have a, a better, uh, uh, I'm gonna say settlement with the, with the, camp, with the site. With your, yeah. And then on the, uh, and those buildings on that side is, uh, is part of the rental uh, part of the community, which is about 200 units right now, of, uh, different sizes and ranges which is, uh, again, this part of the major side on the right. And then on the left side, you see, which is right here, you see that this is a, uh, a, a townhouse uh, community with about 50 for sale homes that actually we're trying to also create a protected area, which is an open space with about six, more than six acres uh, um, in size that is adjacent to that and trying again to maintain that kind of nature of this site. So as we mentioned earlier, the key focus in here is to show you how the most predominant piece in the project is the commons and the amenities for the, for the community. So right here we have about nine and a half acres, almost 10 acres of uh, common areas dedicated to open space and resident activities. So in this space, we start developing a series of functions 
as you know, as we described earlier, the arrival experiences, um, how you can have some water features, walking paths, or you can have some lawns for activities for uh, for the residents, picnic areas, and so forth. You can we can also are trying to develop some uh, ac active uh, spaces like the tennis courts or the I guess we're going to say the courts for uh, pickleball or tennis and so forth. Small amphitheaters for events that is actually we're we're using by um, we're trying to use the topography to develop these type of elements. And uh, and again, there's some small shade structures and, and outdoor spaces along the buildings to create that sense of, again, the community, and also to activate the, the, the core amenities of the and, community. And in part by doing that, by giving a variety of, of spaces that can be used uh, different ways by different people throughout the day, throughout the year. But then we don't stop there on the outdoor spaces because we understand also that the activities can be done and should be done also within a, 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 a conditioned space. So that's why we're proposing a, a clubhouse <coughs> building that is kind of the main centerpiece of the community as you arrive in there, you have a series of uh, maybe places for uh, restaurants or um, uh, wine tasting as we're showing in here, uh, outdoor dining or indoor as well. And, and last but not least, uh, a series of wellness components, meaning like a, a small gym, uh, activity spaces, um, activities room, and a spa as well for residents. So we're trying to develop a, a, a balanced program and activities that are actually gonna keep people busy and active all year round. So when we talk about buildings, the buildings really function as a uh, backdrop of the commons and the amenities. So the main arrival is all uh, flanked by trees and the smaller buildings, and then all the amenities are flanked by this kind of backdrop again of buildings. So you see those buildings that we're putting in there has a, have a couple different um, con uh, styles and types. So we have buildings that go from uh, townhomes, as you see on the, on the left here, those are townhome style buildings with two, three stories, when we, with two stories with par plus parking, where you have about four units um, in each. You have a nice clubhouse uh, that is close to the amenities and the water features, a photo share drop off that creates that sense of arrival to the overall community. And then the villa buildings, as uh, we call them, which is the smaller buildings with 20 to four units each with parking underneath. And those buildings are also this, uh, create um, this uh, place around the site in a way that actually respond to the topography. And then a, a, an apartment building, which is one of the uh, options that we are proposing, mostly because we want to create options for people. We don't want to have just one single opportunity, but you know, more people can actually have access to these. So we believe that having different options in units, we can uh, offer opportunities for people to be part of this community uh, and be more inclusive, if you will. So in this aerial view here, we wanted to show kind of, again, this is a smaller sketch. We have some, um, I'm gonna say more finished renderings, uh, still conceptual, mm -hmm. yeah. but we wanted to show you the, the, the existing campus and what we're proposing and how these, the balance between green, open space and the buildings. And we did the buildings in a little darker tone here so you can actually see them. And you can tell the, you can see the central core piece, which is the clubhouse and how the arrival is flanked again by a series of smaller buildings where you can have those more flat type buildings, the residential building here, the villa buildings here and here, and then a series of townhomes that kind of starts slowly going into the, into the uh, uh, kind of most more, um, I'm gonna say steep topography in the back of the property. Some of these views are trying to give you a sense of what we're uh, anticipating or hoping to have in here. Um, this is give you a flavor, so you can see the different scale of buildings as we were saying, uh, and also we're showing a second the, the uh, some of the walking trails which I haven't um, touched on. The, the the goal here is to have a loop um, um, set of uh, yeah loop path, loop path for, exactly for residents to you know, to bike and walk around right. the campus again promoting <coughs> active um, living within the site and giving a variety of of places to to exercise you know to, to engage with the with the surrounding. I will touch on that in a second, but here's just showing you how the buildings are really placed around these commons and amenities, trying to frame more of that, uh, uh, you know, again, the, the most important part, which is the socialization aspect of the community. The clubhouse, the villa buildings, the apartment building, and then uh, the flats in this view. Going to the next here, you see how we are um, assuming the, uh, or how, what is our perception for the sense of arrival? So the goal here is to, tr to get people to kind of go around, start defining his arrival to different places in the community, but al always maintaining that sense of, again, of scale of community of more like a residential neighborhood. 
uh, the clubhouses I mentioned before, where we have a series of uh, functions, a dining, uh, coffee bar activities, and so forth. Um, and then in this view here, we also wanted to highlight the pedestrian connectivity. You see that highlighted area in the perimeter, which is a loop road that is about almost a mile long of walking trails uh, around the community. And then all the pedestrian connectivity within the, the I'm gonna call the um, amenities portion of the, of the project. And then uh, the, uh, the other portion of this is the wellness recreation. We have these courts that actually, we, we, you, know, you know, pickleball and tennis courts. I mean, these are courts used for multiple functions with a small um, um, pavilion in the center. And you see all these series of open spaces in here that create this outdoor dining or the activity lawn or the pool, the yoga and, you know, amphitheater and so forth. Those spaces are again supporting that sense or, or concept of um, uh, concept of socialization. So we have a, a couple. Uh, Can you go back to that last slide real quick? Yes, absolutely. That slide here is uh, actually, we call it the hero shot. It's like the view uh, from the uh, apartment building looking into the, right. uh, the town homes. This is sort of the view looking north. Mm -hmm. I noticed looking the north. hero shot. That's why I wanted to see it again. <laughs> absolutely. Know. I'm good, thank you. And so, again, uh, bottom line here, we're trying to develop a community that, that, I mean, it's a community. We're not trying to develop a project. It's not just a, a series of buildings with no connection. I think the investment here and the uniqueness of the project are really associated to, uh, again, the, the strong sense of community and to create a unique proposition for, uh, for this uh, site um, and respect it as much as possible. So, yeah. And I just, to, to, go, to go back there, you know, sort of recognizing um, you know, some some tweaking of the zoning will be necessary. That's really where you know Mark comes. The back mic, please step up to the mic. Oh, sorry about that. Um, really, just uh, acknowledging that will some reworking of the zoning will be necessary. Mark will get into the. That's really his area of expertise. But um, you know, just sort of uh, giving an idea of what's proposed there um, in terms of from a zoning point of view. You don't you don't happen to have that in print, do you? Because I couldn't see. No, we don't have the. Okay, no, no problem. But we can share this. Yeah, we can, have that. Yeah. we can share the presentation, you know, electronically that without a problem. So that would be great. We, we we know it's a lot of information to take on. Uh, they went through it quickly. We think it's beautiful. It's hard. You look at the various different things. There are a couple of things that I wanted to highlight. First of all, and importantly, this is a redevelopment project. This is an area that is developed currently. It was designed for significant office and office traffic at peak hour. We think this is a very good use where the, you know, when you finally, this of course to be able to do this would have to go through a full, you know, environmental review. We would have to have traffic studies and things of that nature. Uh, and we believe that you'll see that this is a very good use for this site, that it works very well uh, in the particular area. Of course, if we got that far, we would also tell you that this will be state of the art with regard to environmental green aspects to it, et cetera, those kinds of things that you get when we get into more of the details of this. But the basic bottom line of this is we believe strongly in Northern Westchester now that there's a changing demographic of people who are living here. It's not just simply people who are living in single family homes like many of us, but that there are people here that are coming to a different stage. We certainly have a demographic of people who are 55 and older. There's a lot of downsizing that's going on. Many of them no longer want to leave and retire and go elsewhere without maintaining roots of where they are. And they want to have a place where not only some of them can buy, but also where they can rent and have a beautiful community where they can live and rent an apartment as opposed to own. Because maybe they own a, a home somewhere else, or maybe they've sold their home so they can retire and don't want to have to have that kind of investment as they get older. So that's really the demographic that we're shooting for. We think it works here in Yorktown. We have seen it work in other areas we've built. Uh, have been involved in some rental projects and very successful ones in Somers, for example, who have s kind of similar dynamics. Just, a, just a quick question. Uh, sure. Going back to the green aspect, because yeah. in the concept and in the plan, I know it's maybe premature, but you do have like charging stations, EV charging stations, we're gonna, that kind well, of stuff? We, we don't have them yet because we're not that far, but the answer is, of course, anybody okay. who's building these days is going to have to be able to accommodate the electric vehicles because that is the you know, that's where, we're, that's where we're heading. I mean, I will say this too. I mean, one of the things that we've done whilst the buildings, when you look at the heights and we'll talk about those, one of the things we did is we did go up an extra story. And we went up the extra story to accommodate the parking under the buildings because we thought it was important to keep this community park-like setting in the middle of the area. 
and not have parking, you know, in big surface lots that are out in the area that you see in other places. It's, exp it's more expensive to do it that way. The trade-off is that it goes up an extra story because the residential doesn't start till you get to the second story in some of it, but that's, you know, what, how we've decided to do. We think, it's a, we think it's a better use and we think they've done a very nice job designing that. This is going to be a total knockdown of that um, contractor's yeah. register. Yeah, un unfortunately, we're living in a time right now where that commercial office activity is the needle in the haystack. The the only you know in our firm where we do see a lot of the commercial activity, the only kinds of things you see these days, which you wouldn't put next to the Taconic Parkway, are kind of last mile warehouse distribution centers, the FedExes, the UPSs, the Amazons. You know, there is some of that commercial activity, but the office space kind of user is just it's just not happening and, and unfortunately if you don't move quickly it stays vacant for a long time and then it's not paying taxes and it it atrophies right not not for not for office use but in other words you're not going to utilize any of the buildings for no, apartments coming, or anything they're, like they're, that okay. they're coming they're coming down okay so in terms of the amount of so you said how many acres is the entire it's 15 place? acres of, of open space on a 35 acre site so we think we've done a Nice job. So, well, how, comparative to what's there now, which is it, defunct it, anyway. Again, it's rule of thumb, and they'll show more on the maps when we get more specific. The rental piece of the project primarily is on that area that you come into the office and the parking mm -hmm. that's around there. It's a little bit more than that, but primarily the rental buildings are on that site. The townhomes that we're proposing is in the back area that currently is not developed. That's what I want. Fair enough. I think some of the questions I have will end up going to our planning bo uh, board. Okay. Uh, John, would you mind coming up, or our director of planning? So, I know we've had an issue with sewers in the area. Is that property sewered right now, or is it septic? I believe it's sewered. I don't know that for a fact, but I'm pretty sure it's sewered. Yeah, pretty sure it comes down right to route six. Yep. There's okay. a pump station right down at the end of yeah. the street there. Okay. Um, uh, t -t 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 building height. I know, you know, giving up to have the parking underneath, but right now, what's our current for that area? Well, I think the zone that they're proposing in is RSP zone, which is up in the 40 to f one is 40, one is 45, as I recall. So it's very probable that they can get their median point of the roof under that very easily, utilizing the grades. But height, I think, of the buildings will be an issue given where the site is located and that it is up on a high point mm -hmm. right. across the valley of uh, Jefferson Valley. So, right. so I think that's something that you'll really need to look at quite closely, although they will probably be able to comply with code in terms of height fairly easily and then my last question is there any screening requirement uh, because of the taconic being a scenic uh, parkway well it will be referred to the state uh, and they will comment on it and probably work with the applicant but I also think uh, this board should also endeavor to make sure to the greatest extent that they can that the Taconic Parkway as a scenic roadway is protected to the greatest extent possible. So. It looks like this project is set away from the Taconic anyway, per se, but, and uh, if I'm not mistaken, it was hard for me to see the viewpoints. It is, and I think, I think we should move to some view sheds fairly quickly to understand the project. Um, you cannot really see contractors register from the Taconic very easily in leaf off condition on occasion. If you look up mm -hmm. as you're going by, you can c capture some of it, but this is now four stories. Uh, I'm not sure to what extent tr there will be tree removal taking place as you get to the extre extremities of the, of the property. So it, it's a factor to consider and probably should be looked at pretty closely. All right. Thanks, John. Does uh does the the supervisor, um, Matt? Can we hear Matt? Yeah, I can hear you. Okay. Can you put Matt back up on the screen? I think this is done. Uh, we brought this presentation uh, to me, and I thought it was important.
point and then we bring it forward to the board to volume get your temperature on it. Um, as a reminder, again, this is the contractor's register that uh, at one point, Mark, correct me if I'm wrong, but I believe it uh, employed just under 500 employees there. Uh, so it was, a, it was a pretty popular uh, uh, destination from uh, that perspective, and, and it's uh, you know rather disheartening that it no longer is able to be used for that uh, purpose. Um, but again, looking at the uh, potential that it may have, um, I wanted to bring it before the town board so you guys get a, a peek of it and, uh, and provide some feedback. Uh, how many and how many units are you going to have? It's a total of 250. There were 200 oh, rental so that we showed, and there were another 50. So it'll probably be a lot less traffic than the heyday. We we think by the time you would go about and do that, that that's what you would find. That the road network was built for something much more uh, peak hour uh, intensive than what we are, what we are proposing. So in those 250 units, however it breaks down uh, on paper with you guys. Um, you had mentioned something about visitors units or yeah or something. what was that about within yes, the clubhouses one of the things we're thinking of because some of these they're not the largest of units so you're, you're downsizing you're going so some of our clients build uh, storage units these days because people come out of their homes and they have no place to put their stuff that's why you see so many mini storage proposals right. that go out one of the other things that happens is they say well they want their grandchildren to come visit or they want their you know kids to come visit where do we put them now we don't have a home anymore we're living in an apartment so you build a few guest suites over by the amenities area in the clubhouse, uh, which is just for the people who live there, where they can rent them out and say you have a family, uh, you know, you have somebody from the family visiting, they can stay there. It's kind of like a, a, a small hotel room that mm -hmm. they can stay in on property and be near their family. That, it's that, an amenity for the people who live there. Is that part of the 250, or is that no? On those top? are, and again, it's you're probably talking a, a handful of those. We we haven't fully designed it yet. It's our idea. I mean, the idea tonight is to come forward with a proposal and a plan and a concept, our, we're hoping to hear back from you. This is going to be a very significant undertaking and a very significant investment and a lot of money that has to get spent to even get to the stage of coming to you for, for a rezoning proposal. So what we're hoping to find out is if you think it's a good idea. We get that you're nowhere near the point where you have enough information where you'd be able to approve a project like this. We have to go through an environmental review. We have a whole process. but. We always kid around with our clients and always say the best, next best answer to yes is no. Don't waste your money. We're not looking to do this. Or sounds like a good boy. idea. We're intrigued, right? And we're willing to, if you're willing to take the risk with us, we'll, we'll take a look at it and go do some more work and come back and, you know, answer our questions. So that's kind of how we propose. Mark, if I could, I just want to let the town board know um, that John and I have seen other proposals for this property. We saw one where they tried to show us it was like a it was like a board game how many units can we put on the property which was john and i both thought was a terrible idea uh and so we told uh, the people who were selling the property which is a hedge fund that took it over from contractors register that if they were going to bring proposal to us that we wanted to see it uh, as a high-end you know uh regional attraction uh you know cornerstone project and and so and mark did you mention some of the other uh, projects that you're that you and your clients are currently working on in the in the region. I I, I just I didn't go through them in in, in detail. Our, our clients are very significantly involved on the on the Yonkers waterfront. Yeah, I looked uh, them up already. The Teutonia Hall site, <laughs> Chicken Island site. I mean, the Yonkers has had got a whole transformation happening. I know Yorktown has a lot of former Yonkers residents like myself who lives in Golden's Bridge. We all and come, myself. We all, it's we all, the we North all up, We all wound up coming north, but but. Uh, so they, 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 are, they are very involved there. Our firm has been involved in an awful lot of projects similar to these, as I said, in, in neighboring communities. And it's just a reflection of where we are today. The office market is not working. Uh, we've repurposed, uh, we've repurposed Orcas Parks into Memorial Sloan Kettering Hospital uh, units, into uh, Wegman Supermarkets, into Lifestyle Fitnesses. You know, we did the... Reader's Digest uh, property down Which in Chappaqua. Yeah. You know, we you get a mixture of housing together with retail, et cetera. And it's just, you know, it's. I think that's what our county is going to be looking like. In but the White, next, White Plains the just converted years. a big office building into actually unique apartments. That's that's the Rose Associates yeah, property Rose, over on yeah. North Broadway. You know, there, this is happening everywhere. The good news is eventually you'll get to a point you hope You'll bring where now, now that now it'll be a, a, a good office market because what's left is there. We do have some good stuff just to give people some good news. We are involved in the Regeneron project and have been for a long time. That is the number one 
uh, economic development driver in Westchester these days. They're up over 5,000 employees now. It's a wonderful company, and they're building millions of square feet. So there are good jobs. They are happening in Westchester, but there's just that multi-tenanted uh, office park in the, in, you know, in, in the outer uh, northern Westchester area is just not getting tenanted these days. So we just have to figure out a new use for these. And again, I want to stress it. This is not someone coming in telling you I want to take a forest and take it down and build something. This is a redevelopment mm -hmm. of an existing site, and we got to figure out how to make it because you've counted on it for taxes in your commercial base. Got, we got to figure out a way to repurpose it and make it work. Well, I thank you for bringing it forward for informational purposes and also just for us to have a visual to support the, the concept. I really appreciate that. Can I ask a question? Sure. You didn't mention on the 200 apartments, one bedrooms, two bedrooms? They are, they are primarily, again, we haven't gotten to that stage yet. Well, you got to have most some concept, the, right? Mo most of the things that are being built, built these days in Westchester are one and two bedrooms. And the reason is because they're not 55 and older and people are afraid there's going to be too many school children that are being built. So there's a little bit of a lack of that. We're trying to figure out the market. We'll work with you on that. Right now, we are talking about primarily ones and twos. The question is, that third bedroom for these people, it isn't for a child. It may be for a visiting grandchild. It may be for an office, because people aren't going to work as much anymore. And some people who come out of a big single family home may not want a small apartment. That's a market study for up here that we need to complete as part of our process. But the answer is right now we're primarily thinking ones and twos, and there may be some threes as well, particularly in those townhouse for sales. But we're not we're not finished yet. We're going to figure that out. Thank you, well, Mark. I, I will say as the liaison for our senior advisory committee, this the the availability of having some place they could downsize to has really uh, been very very well, uh, big for them. I can't tell you as the attorney who wasn't a senior when we were doing the Trump residences back back in the day, which then turned into the park donation and all the rest of it. It's nice to be back now. I can say, well, maybe I'll get one of those units. So mm -hmm. I, didn't, I didn't qualify back then. So I was, uh, was in White Plains today, and um, <clears throat> I have uh, several clients in White Plains. And this one particular client is relocating. And he's relocating because they're knocking down the building that they're in, and they're, they're putting up uh, multi-units, you know, residential. Um, <clears throat> nothing like this. More of a kind of like, you know, multi-story. Anyway. Uh, they're relocating to a place on Westchester Avenue. I won't divulge the address, but um, it's an office park. I was there today uh, to look at the wiring, make sure everything was good, prep them for the move because we're, we're relocating them IT-wise, and uh, there was nobody there. <laughs> so your your assessment is spot on. I'm in an office building. I mean, it was no years in White Plains, and it was a building that you could not get space in that building for years it was impossible and they kept the rents kept going up and up and up and up and now all of a sudden there's vacancy and we're right next to the train station we've been there for a long time it's just the way it is and what's happening is as leases are now coming up for renewal firms like myself we may stay but we may also take smaller offices because not as many people are in the even if you have the same number of employees not everybody's there at the same time they're on different you know, not everybody's there every day. They're on different schedules, et cetera. So offices are also going to be reimagined. So that is just something we're going to have yeah. to, as a community, figure out. I mean, out. I get it. It's August and people on vacation, but... Uh, oh, but it's been like this all year. It's, it's like that, yeah. So it's spot on. And, and as opposed to watching this property stay vacant for decades, um, uh, you know, and, and I, could see, I could see the beauty of the concept. Well, I thank you for that. I also want you to know that the owner here is owns a lot of office space he'd be happy to rent it out you know if, if there was a market for it it's not somebody who wouldn't be willing to own a commercial office building they own hundreds of thousands mm -hmm. of square feet it's just th this is not renting we my wife and i own a, a massage studio on white plains and we had one of the tenants in the building there came because they didn't want to own their building anymore they sold their building and they're renting a floor instead of a four-story building that they used to have right so yeah that downsize is even, you know, happening more and more commercially. So. Thank you for bringing us forward. Yeah. Yeah. We thank you. We appreciate it. We look forward to continuing the dialogue. Thank Sounds you very good. much. Thank you, Mark, and thank you to your team. Be careful, Mark. We can do a lot of talking. Yeah, Just we can't can see you in that little. It's hard to see you from here. Thank you. It's okay. <laughs> Great job. Back. War on terror. All right. We ready to go into our next uh, topic? Yep.
So is John Tegeter still in the room? I John, saw him. John is still in the room. Back. Yep. We're on Terror Monument. John Tegeter. Uh, he's just oh, chatting. Oh, he's chatting back there for a moment. Matt, can you see the podium? Yes, I can. Thank you. Okay. There's John Tegeter. Again. This is a follow-up conversation, um, one that the board had. You're gonna lose. Meetings, you're gonna lose. Two weeks ago. You got a I message. You, what? I'm gonna point right at you, John. There you go. Running out of power. You're running out of power. That's what. Right. That's what it shows. Okay. Uh, uh, so the war on terror monument was something that we discussed uh, to to put over at Patriot Park. Uh, John has been working diligently uh, to try and meet, uh, we'll call it an ambitious timeline uh, for, for Veterans Day. Uh, and he has an update on the project, and so I wanted to bring him to the town board uh, so that we can make a decision, hopefully, on uh, on how we want to proceed. John? Yep, okay. Uh, I researched some monument companies, and I did have a site visit with one. Uh, typically when you're buying stone monuments, whether it's a headstone or a, even a little stone that has a, a plaque for a memorial or a memoriam garden at least, you know, even small ones, it takes 12 weeks. <clears throat> so I uh, looked at a representative company that works with a very large quarry, very well-known quarry. Uh, and showed him the site, talked about uh, things that we were looking for, and he went off and looked for pieces of stone in inventory that are would fit in with what we have there. In other words, a large piece of stone, mm -hmm. big piece, not not a headstone, but something a little bit bigger with you know similar design. Maybe not the same type of stone, of course, but none of those three monuments that are there are the same type of granite. At any rate, he found a couple of pieces that we can work with, which makes making the deadline uh, doable. Mm -hmm. um, and so that, that's where I'm at. Uh, it, his work will include um, the bronze plaque installed and you know ready, and he'll come with the piece of stone and drop it in on top of a concrete footing that we construct on our own. John, um, I had an occasion to go on the last conversation of last week and revisit the area in the back where um, we had talked about putting um, the Vietnam Memorial stone and also one for Korea. I think there's one for Korea there already, but it's Korea and Vietnam. Right. Um, and to actually give each one their own designated uh, monument. And after revisiting it and, and uh, thinking about what we were going to do, I think that it would be a good idea to actually let's get Vietnam out there also along with the possibility of war on terror um, and to also do our due diligence, get the plaque made, you know, for the survivors and deceased of the, of the wars and then do our due diligence to make sure we don't forget anybody when we put the name on the stone. Yes. I think that's, I, I, I was under a little bit of a misunderstanding last week when this was brought up and actually having thought about it and gone and looked at what we have there and the way that they're arranged and the honor that would be taken by those families, whether they're still around or not, would be great. Yeah, I agree. And there's a nice spot for it, which mm -hmm. we had accounted for in our, uh, when we had moved the monuments in the first place. Right. And I thank you for your due diligence in it also. Um, I tell you, it's going to be a daunting task for us to get all those names right. Yeah. Well, that, that <laughs> <laughs> and you have to be careful and uh, diligent and uh, find as many as you can. Yeah. I think for Vietnam, we, we may need to just free circle back, circle back with the Veterans Committee 
on the plaque design, if that's something that we're reconsidering. Um, I think we also have a couple of procurement questions that we're going to need settled if um, if we're trying to accomplish both by by uh, the deadline of Veterans Day, uh, because I think it's going to trigger some procurement uh, policies to go into place. So um, that's something for the board to know. I don't know if that changes the, the, the feeling or the direction, uh, but we know that we can at least get uh, War on Terror uh, moving in time for Veterans Day. And, and also with, with regards to Vietnam, uh, I think we have to do a little research on to making sure if we're going to include names on, on Vietnam, which was the original intent, that we have the right names before it goes into production. Yeah. And it looks like um, just for one of our veterans gave us the information based on the National Korean War. Um, so I think that was also being talked about. Supposedly it's been passed with the New York State Legislature to put the Korean War, war veterans um, on the Veterans Day along with the Vietnam War. So I don't know if that's something that we should also look into. Exactly. What, what did they give you? It says the National Korean War Veterans Armatized Day or, or Korean Veterans Day is observed each year on July 27th. The day honors and sacrifices for the Korean War vets and their family. This would be a wonderful day to honor them. But I was thinking, I don't know if we have a stone for them as well. Well, we have there the Korean and Vietnam one. It's together. Yeah, together. So the idea is when we do the Vietnam one. We would separate. We would separate it. We'd have one singular for Korea, one for Vietnam, and one for Global War on Terror. Mm -hmm. The Perfect. current plaque, I think we should retain and, and place in another spot because it, it's a historical thing that We've had. Uh, th the town did at, a, at an earlier time. And I don't think it should disappear. I think it should just be moved to another another location yeah yeah possibly e even within the same park with with another plaque that explains what what it is and a little bit of the history i think is always nice it could it could actually even be in patriot park yeah with its own designation a with absolutely yeah designation. yeah and it says uh you know it's uh, july 27th is korean veterans day um and uh, maybe maybe the town could uh could get together and do something for korean veterans day uh you know every year would yeah. be nice. Well, what, what they're looking for at this point, Albany recognizes the Vietnam veterans with a day in Albany. Right. Uh, and, so they're getting and, one. And yeah, but they, they want to make sure. It, it's not it's not in stone yet. They would like to have one in Albany as well. Right. And yeah, that's right. Yeah. And, and so, some of the, we, we're losing as many Korean War vets as Vietnam War vets right now per day. Yeah. And, uh, you know, I think... Uh, I think the average age of a Korean War vet is in their uh, late 80s right now. Yeah. So it's, gotta it's, be. it's important to try to, you know, try to get that recognition before they uh, pass us by. And now, now we have the Space Force. That's going to be the next. Uh -huh. The new flag. The, yeah, the new flag, possibly. Um, they have a flag. Yeah. They do. Oh, yeah. And, uh, you know, we before the Space Force was formed, we did have the astronauts that we did lose um, in one of the shuttle flights. So, just a Sounds point. good. Okay. And so thank you for your efforts. You some direction here, right? Because now we're talking like five or six different things. I, I, think, yeah. I think right now we focus on the war on terror, if everyone's in agreement. And then we can, you know, we could look to separate the uh, Vietnam and, and Korean. Korea. In, in time to hopefully have a dedication on one day or the other, whether it's Vietnam Veterans Day or Korean Veterans Day. So that gives us a little more leeway uh, and some time to do the research. So I think the, I so think the so Vietnam Day is we're in agreement on that uh, from the town board standpoint? So I'm, I'm only looking at John, so I can't see what everyone else is thinking. <laughs> Say that again, Matt. So you would Everybody agree. agree. Yes. Is the town board in agreement that will move with the War on Terror Monument for Veterans Day, and that gives us time to better plan what we're going to do with bifurcating the Korean War with the plaque there of Korea War and Vietnam War and uh, putting together the Vietnam War. Memorial. Absolutely. Yes. Okay. So since we have, John, so we have direction there, right? Yes. Okay. And so we'll move ahead with that uh, application. Uh, for the for the uh, war on terror, which is great, 
Um, and we can, uh, and I do have a, John, we just have to just, like I said, circle back on the, on the procurement side. Uh, but I think we can at least, uh, Pat had sent me, depending on where the direction uh, of this conversation went, a, a resolution uh, for us to move ahead. I just need to find it. So we'll do it as part of the resolutions uh, for, for later in the agenda, okay? Good. John, just one quick question. Yes. Could we buy the second stone now? We're thinking alike, Tom. I, I will ask the fellow. Yeah. Great. Uh, at least if we, he can hold it yeah until we get our uh you know research done and then have it there for us to do so and we'll deposit it if we need it but i think yeah. if we buy one they probably hold the other one for yeah. several months probably until we get our ducks in a row so to speak okay you good i'm good okay. all right matt you good uh i'm good i, I have the resolution which we'll read into uh into later okay so let's move on john don't go anywhere let's move on to the reconvening of the public hearing uh, sure. this is for chapter uh, 300 zoning article 7 entitled permitted special uses um and i think it's important that john you and i sat and we were over some of the issues that were raised and i think we have some solutions uh and and clarity based on that discussion so could you just update the board on what that, what those, uh, what those uh, solutions and, and clarity pieces are, and maybe that can get us uh, uh, some some additional feedback. Okay. John has backup moving to the front. Yeah. Uh, I believe. Oh, I'm sorry. I'm sorry. My screen's too small. I didn't see you there, Mr. Grace. <laughs> I believe this, the, the discussion uh, revolves around the parking discussion, uh, which. We looked at, and I spoke with uh, Joe Rena on, so he was understanding some of the directions that we were thinking about. Uh, there, in in the uh, draft law, it states that the parking requirement for the boutique hotel is 1.1 parking spaces per room, and that when you have a restaurant that, in particular, serves uh, members of the public and not just uh, hotel patrons that that parking requirement would be one space per 600 square feet so that is a, a low low amount of parking the one per 600 feet so when you look at what is coming up in the only boutique hotel that we have an example of which is the one here in Yorktown Heights, it does have um, like a breakfast area that you expect to see in a lot of hotels, which is kind of a, a lounge breakfast area, you know, afternoon snack or something like that. It also has, is proposing a rooftop grill and, and bar. The, the lounge and tea and breakfast area, in my view, is something that will be, even though it may be available to the public, something that will really be mm. primarily used by the patrons. Yeah. And that there will be not a really high demand for members of the public. Uh, so my sense was that looking at the 1.1 parking space per room, that if you bump that to say 1.2, you get an extra three spaces. So even if you're full, you do have the additional three, two to three spaces of parking for a couple extra car loads if you get there, which I, I don't think that you really will see that too much, maybe occasionally, if that. So I think that would cover that kind of um, amenity. In terms of the rooftop grill and bar, which sounds like an attraction that the public will be interested in along with the guests, uh, it, it, it seems as though there warrants a little bit more parking uh, in, in, the, in the law rather than the one per 600. We thought going down to like one space to 250 square feet or even one per 200 square feet. Uh, I'm right now thinking that you're probably better served with the one per 200 
keeping in mind that you will have with the 1.2 spaces and many of your patrons for that rooftop bar will be patrons at the hotel mm -hmm. that that additional parking will get you probably close to enough of what you will need on most occasions there's always occasions where they will be over full and have to find parking elsewhere which we are aware of on that particular site and also on future sites when they do come in that may happen as well but that's that's a common occurrence so my recommendation is to do uh, the, the base parking requirement of 1.2 spaces per room right now there's 18 rooms in that particular hotel uh, and then have for the out the um, restaurant that uh, is available to the public to have one space per 200 square feet keep in mind one per 200 is what the old retail office requirement was so it's it's fairly uh, generous and we did drop down to one to 400 at uh, one to two 250 also I'll acknowledge to you that restaurants in our code right now are one space per 50 square feet of patron area and one space per 100 square feet of prep area that is a lot of parking and for instance when you when we look at restaurants that are coming into a retail center we do look at the varying times of usage but we are not seeing that type of parking that's coming into most restaurants when they're when they're brand new everybody goes there mm -hmm. but once you know the honeymoon is over we do see more normal uh, retail type parking in, in most of those areas Kind of like the Popeyes backup. Kind of like the Popeyes backup. <laughs> so, like the Popeyes backup <laughs> so, so, John, a, a, an interesting point was made yesterday during the Lions concert. Uh, they had a really nice Billy Joel tribute band and a uh, pretty full field. And the point was made: gee, you know, I didn't think we would accommodate all of this, all of these people, parking-wise. But there, there were probably fourteen, fifteen hundred people on the field. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So that, that the parking is around. Parking's around. It sure is. Yeah, you know you have to remember most of Yorktown Heights was built at the five per thousand, and y most of that is uh, unused for right. most parts of the day. Even most uh, in, on the weekends, it's rare to see them all filled up. It's rare to see a parking lot that has that demand, and right. they they don't have enough parking. There's one here, which is the Turcos, now Uncle Giuseppe's parking lot which in the holiday times you have to Circle drive around, around a, a little times, bit yeah. but it's not impossible to park there so right right but uh you, know, you always end up finding a spot in a fairly yeah. reasonable amount of time yes. getting your shopping done and going home correct <clears throat> so that that's my uh that's my sense of it at this point John, there, there was another piece of it that you and i had discussed uh which is we're not amending the overlay district we're, we're amending the portion of the code that's specific to hotels is that accurate that's correct so if you look in the overlay explain that to us, please excuse me can you just explain that to us if you look in the overlay district law it says under the uh, allowed uses it says among others boutique hotels as per 300-52 so the anticipation was that the boutique hotel special permit law which we're considering now would go into 300-52 which is the hotel motel uh, special permit section uh, so th it has always been uh, anticipated that it goes into that at the bottom of that section and becomes as you read it through right now you know uh, an appended section to 300-52 so it just didn't seem to make sense to uh, I mean e even if it becomes another s owned section of of its of uh, of law it still should be in the special permit section uh, not in the overlay district so, mm -hmm. so two points on that I think I that answered some of the questions that were raised uh, uh, at last week's public hearing I thought they were um, uh, valid and I, and I just wanted to make sure that we were doing our best to provide some of the answers to them. And I think John did a, did a good job I also agree with his uh, re redu proposed reduction 
uh, of one for every 600 square feet to one for one to every 200 square feet. Uh, I think that makes uh, a lot of sense as well. Um, and John, on any of the other comments, I know that you and I went, you know, we, we watched the public hearing together. Was there anything else that you wanted to add? And yes, that means I did watch it twice, just for the record. I experienced it once and watched it again. Uh, anything you want <laughs> to add there, John? Uh, you know, just in terms of what the bo boutique hotels are, uh, I don't know if you recall, I sent the board a couple of articles back in April, uh, but boutique hotels are really special, special designed hotels that provide a unique experience. So I think that the definition here is appropriate. The 25 units I think is appropriate because what we're looking for in particular in uh, our hamlets is a smaller, Mm -hmm. Not uh, a hundred unit one. Not a hundred unit one, and a lot of the chains will do a hundred unit hotels already. They can be considered boutique under some definitions because they're under 150, but they don't have that special design, that uniqueness, and so on and so forth. So you really want uh, something that is a smaller sized hotel that can fit into a lot of places here in town, enhance some of the hamlets. Right now it's just Yorktown Heights. Uh, but also is at, at a size that is manageable for those enhanced design amenities and, and services. So those are the only two things I want to mention. Yeah, and I think one of the comments was that, um, you know, uh, why add, why have, why, why would the law include, um, you know, a swimming pool uh, as part of the law, even though that this particular project yeah. isn't planning to have a swimming pool, doesn't have the space for the swimming pool. And, and, I, and I think that the answer is, is, the things that are in the, the current law are things that would reasonably be expected yeah. to appear in a hotel. Yes. Um, and, and whether or not uh, the person, the builder, the contractor, the group, whatever, um, is looking to uh, uh, have a pool or not, that, that that's their decision at the time of their planning. Right. Um, and, and to uh, narrow the law in such a way that it only applies for, you know, the corner of Commerce Street and Veterans Road, I think, would would not be appropriate. Yes, and I, I think that you could you could uh, expect to see possibly in some other areas in town a boutique hotel that would warrant having a small pool with it. Right. In, in Yorktown Heights, it probably doesn't make sense. Uh, but again, that goes to speaks to the design and the unique character that is created with each individual boot, boutique hotel. So. I think my facial expressions have shown my appreciation for this boutique hotel being presented here in Yorktown. I look forward to seeing all the departments vet it so that we could be on the rooftop in the next couple <laughs> months. So, <Possible. laughs> um, but yes, I understand. I think the, the basic thing here is really that it doesn't change the overlay district law. It sticks only to this amendment. And also it gives the opportunity to open up a door for the other five hamlets that we have in town, you know, yeah. to see if there is a niche here in New York town. And maybe they'll stay at the hotel and make it a night. At the concert. At, yeah, at the concert. I mean, everyone likes staycations these days. Um, but I do appreciate your 25 in there because I think those pop-ups are usually like the 100. Yeah. And um, they're just turning doors it's a, different it's a totally different and it feels different it animal, feels yeah. totally different yeah. than a 25 or in, in a big city possibly not we're not big city. Not big city. Not big city. Not. okay i have no questions mr grace yeah no i i, I appreciate john Tiger's comments i uh, i do caution uh, in terms of making the parking more uh, a burdensome uh, that is really i, I don't think it's a, it's a trend that you want to go towards I think that uh, what you have is in these codes is the minimum required parking. And uh, usually if a developer or an, an enterprise thinks that it's necessary for more parking rather than less parking, they will, you know, uh, uh, design the project accordingly. I think what does happen when you, when you have higher minimum required parking requirements that you basically take away some of the creativeness in the development of, of a project and you end up creating more asphalt than you do uh, a project. Um, we all are very experienced in the town of Yorktown, and uh, most of, if we grew tumbleweed in Yorktown, most of our parking spaces would could be filled with tumbleweed. 
and I say that you know, obviously facetiously, but the bottom line is that the town has been developed with minimum re parking requirements that are too much for what uh, is, has been necessary mm -hmm. historically. Ed, I appreciate you pointing out um, that we have a uh, uh, the Jack uh, uh, Jack DeVito DeVito Veterans, Veterans Memorial. Memorial Field is used for a, n a number of activities all the time, all different types of, uh, of the day. Um, there is never an issue as far as parking. There's never an issue as far as traffic is concerned. There's, uh, there's never, and, and it accommodates, uh, you know, an enormous amount of people. The concerts, some are more well attended than others, but on average you get 800 to 1,000 people there. But soccer, sat if you go by there on Saturdays, you have the soccer, mm -hmm. and you have the you have the uh, synagogue going, and you have the veterans and, and uh, halls going, and there's never an issue with parking. And the thing is, I think you got to take a look at what you really want with the vision of the downtown New York town. We talk about, you know, we really, if you want to create or encourage walkability, you want to have less asphalt rather than, than, than more asphalt. Um, the project was designed, you know, w w with something in, in mind to encourage exactly a vision uh, of downtown uh, Yorktown. And, and I caution that, again, when you create a code and you require minimum parking requirements. They are minimums, they are not maximums. It's kind of interesting if you would do it maximum, I would think it more, it's, it's, a, it's, a, it's a more prudent thing to do because what you do is limit the amount of, of, of blacktop rather than and then uh, I'm just going to go for a shameless plug. I could give you more parking if we make Commerce Street one way. Just kidding. Oh, hey. there you go. You know, you can make your town a lot be better to shameless the plug. highway garage, too. So I'll make a shameless plug there. Touche. <laughs> <laughs> oh, good to know where you stand, Serge. Not a problem. Uh, the shameless Sean plug Sanders, in his hair. Uh, I have two yeah, questions. Yeah. Yeah, no, I just yeah. want to answer before we go to those. Is that okay? I'm sorry, yes. I, so, I, I was having a hard yeah, time. no, I appreciate those comments, and, and they're, they're spot on. And as I mentioned, our experience with parking over the years has been in terms of lowering the, the requirements. Keep in mind that the overlay district allows variation. Mm -hmm. So to be presented later on. This this uh, minimums here that we spoke about can certainly be and will be for this particular site reduced by the planning board of course in a balanced way to make sure that it works as well as it can while providing all of the flexibility and all of the amenities that you would expect. So we would rather see more green instead of asphalt, yeah, you know, and, and, it's and it should have that. Yeah. I, 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 the thing, I, I think we have a wonderful planning board. One thing I think, think you know, we re really do, and a, and a very, uh, you know, one very works very well with the applicants. I just, I, I, you know, the thing is, is that you, 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 you uh, I worry about, you know, as long as it's co constituted with the same gentleman. Uh, I, I have a lot of confidence that this thing will move ahead and, 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 and be a great project. My, uh, my uh, fear you have is to that... to look in the future. Yes, is that, uh, again, I, you know, and I, and I appreciate it, but we, we have to, you know, if the minimum requirements are high, I, we have to go through this whole uh, uh, machination... It's another step. ...justifications for all sorts of different things. I, I think when the, the planning board does have, you know, should have the flexibility to do good planning, and when you're looking at the downtown Heights area, uh, it's in desperate need of you know creative and flexible planning tools. And I, again, I think that uh, you know re making uh, my pitch is, and I, I appreciate where John's coming from, I really do. But my pitch is that be qu just to be cautious about requiring minimum space not number of spaces. Uh, you know, they, they really should be flipped on its on its end and say that. You don't want more than you, you 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 cap the maximum amount of spaces, so you don't have somebody coming in and say, oh, "I need to park and park." You know, is, you know, is, is overly enthusiastic about their project and just creates a sea of asphalt for all of us to to, to, to stare at. And I'm telling you, just look at you have, you know, all the shopping centers in the Heights area are just overfilled with blacktop, and we don't need more of it. We need more of walk. You know, so that, that that's my only caution. I just I, I, and I and I think. And, and that the law has written uh, provides what the protections that, that the town's looking for as far as parking and that we should move ahead on it. And certainly as we go through the process, if there are other issues that are raised, we can, we can approach them as they come along. 
though that's what I would encourage you to just stick with what the text is at this point. Mr. Arena? Thank you. If you're good, that's it. You don't have to bring your little computer up there <laughs> and have it fall off the table or nothing for us tonight? Okay. <laughs> I did have uh, Councilor Barry. I did have just a couple more questions. Okay. Uh, I think I think what we, John, you explained, uh, and I was having a hard time hearing, but I think you explained the the concept behind the special use permits. I think it's important that we just make sure that we're emphasizing the fact that this law is creating a special use permit to be considered by the planning board. It's not an approval for a specific project, although there is one that is awaiting the opportunity to apply. So if you just, if you didn't already, just briefly for the public just have, help them understand what it is uh, a special use permit uh, allows and and how the planning board uses them is that for me yeah. mm -hmm. okay <laughs> a special permit is an allowed use in a particular zone for instance in what's around here in yorktown heights which is c2 or c2r allows all types of retail uh and it has specific uh bulk requirements such as setbacks height uh, maybe you know a, a, a certain parking requirements with a special permit it's a type of use that you expect to have bulk requirements that are unique to that type of use and so that's why the special permit is created it is an allowed use but you have to rise to either the extra requirements or modified requirements from the underlying zone, and that's essentially what it is. I appreciate that. And and the other thing uh, I want to recognize our town attorney, he needs to raise uh, a question as well for the two of you to deliberate on. I mean, we can address this after the public hearing is closed, but it looks like there may be a typo um, in the law. It says we're adding a new section 300 83 I have to pull it up under Article 7, but I think it really should read uh, 300-81.6. But again, it's not a substantive change, but it's something that John and I can address offline. Okay. John, anything on that? No, I'll, I'll work with that. I'm on it. That's fine. All right. Any other questions from the town board? No, I'm good. So then we will reopen the public hearing and we'll invite anyone who wants to speak on this matter to the podium. Uh, again, we ask that you just state your name for the record and keep your comments focused on the matter at hand and address the town board. Thank you. Good evening, Susan Siegel. Um, let me just preface my comments by saying that I'm only commenting on the text of the special permit and my comments are not designed to reflect anything about the Hotel Gardena. Um, before I get to, to the parking issue, um, which I think is, is the, the, the major change, um, I would just ask um, somebody on the town board or John Tegda to clarify a comment that I made uh, last week at the, when you opened the public hearing, and that this will also, this special permit provision for a boutique hotel will also apply to what is being proposed at the Underhill Farm Plan for what is being billed as a regional inn a restaurant and eight rooms and to me that is the same thing as the boot as what is being proposed for the Hotel Gardena so I would just like um, the planning director to, to clarify that or, or somebody on the town board that when that when you consider adopting this proposal that you know and everyone in the community knows that this proposal will affect two projects that have been proposed in Yorktown that we're talking about too and they're two, they're, they're similar in that they're boutique hotels, they're combining a, a food service operation with, with guest rooms, but they're also very different because one is in a commercial area, the, the Gardena Hotel, and the other one is in a mixed use, basically a residential community. So I think the, the impact will be very different. Um, a comment was made uh, last week about well, it's a hotel. Of course, people are going to come at all, all all hours. Well, that's fine on Commerce Street when there are no residents nearby, but it could be very different in the proposed Underhill Farm. So I just want you to keep that in mind. Also, there's obviously that no matter how you change the parking requirements, 
that one hotel on Commerce Street is going to need a waiver of the parking requirements, what, whatever number you set. It, let's say one, one for every 200 for the restaurant space, okay? But because we all know that there's adequate off-street parking, okay? But if you have the same requirement for, for Underhill Farm for the mansion, there's no off-street parking there. So keep that in mind. So that's why I would like this clarified and clarified tonight before the hearing gets closed so that if, if you're ready to close the hearing and then adopt the law, that everyone understands that this will apply to two projects. Re regarding the parking, um, I'm very glad that, um, that you have taken another look at, at the parking requirements because as I said last week, the, the one, one space for every 600 feet was just, <laughs> it was just unbelievable, all right? Um, but I'd like some clarification. The comment was made about the, the lounge, the, the, caf the, the breakfast area that's, in, that's, I think originally it was talked about as 900 square feet. It's been talked about as a breakfast area, as a cafe. It's also been talked about as being open to the public. So if you're not going to count that as your food service requirement, like the one, one space per 200, then it needs to be clarified that if there is this, this lounge area that is for guests only and not open to the public, because once you have something open to the public, you then would be changing your parking requirements. As far as the staff, um, I'm not even sure that increasing it to 1.2 is, is sufficient because we still don't know how, what the staff is for just for the operation of the hotel. There's been no comment there. When it was 1.1, that, that just, I think it, it was less than, than two, two staff people to, to run the hotel. So I think that needs to be clarified and you have to think about that you have no indication about what, what the full-time staff, full or part-time staff will be to run the hotel before you start adjusting that number. As far as the restaurant, obviously one per 200 is a lot better than one, one per, per 600. But I'm not sure that we have any good idea of what the requirement should be because there has never been a concern for all the restaurants that have opened up in recent years that there was any problem that the, the 50 and the 100, I don't want to get, you know, keep repeating those numbers, that that's been a problem. It's never been cited that that was either inadequate or that it was too much. And that was raised as recently as, as Wendy's. Now, I know we're talking about lots of different types of food service establishments. And by the way, the, the code that requires the, the, one, the, the 50, 100 includes places for drinks, bars. It was implied last week that it didn't apply to that. And, and it's, it's the patron area, it's not the number of seats. Some of you may remember way back when we had huckleberries. Goes back a long, long time, okay? You couldn't find a parking space in there. So some restaurants can be very busy. We're, so we, we're talking about a, a Dunkin' Donuts, a Popeyes, and, and a sit-down restaurant and we're talking about bars, and I don't know that we have done a good study as to what our needs are. We know that we had too much parking for retail, and that keeps coming up, the sea of asphalt. Yes, and the town board <coughs> several years ago reduced that from five to four per, per 1,000 square feet. That made sense, but we're talking restaurant use, food service, that's a total different an animal, and I don't know if the one per 200 will, will be adequate. Also, if you do accept that for this, for the special permit for the boutique hotel, are you setting a precedent for other food service establishments? What happens if a restaurant comes in the next time? Okay, a restaurant within an existing shopping center and a store that sold um, widgets, I can't think of anything else, all right, that sold widgets now becomes a, a, um, a restaurant. And you have to say, does that park, the parking obviously changes. And are you gonna have to say it's one for every 200 square feet? If you set it for the boutique hotel for the restaurant, well, wh why should it be different from, from the other restaurant, the new pizzeria that's gonna open up someplace? So you, you'd have to think about that. Um, 
also, and perhaps this is something that John can clarify, the existing parking requirements allow the planning board to modify the parking requirements by 25% if there's a adequate off-street parking or shared parking and things like that. That makes sense in the parking. The planning board has done that a lot of times. The overlay law talks about the, the planning board can waive the bulk requirements by 60% of whatever it is. I don't know, does that 60% apply to the parking or does it only refer to side yards, front yards? And perhaps John can clarify that. So could the planning board waive the, whatever the parking numbers come out to be, can they reduce it by 60%? I think that that's just a question and that has to do with the language in the, in the, in the, in the, in the code. Um, I also, initially when it was explained that 352, the special permit for hotels was gonna, was gonna be modified to include the boutique hotel, but then Adam said something before about we're still doing a new special permit. So I'm a little confused about are we having a new 383 for boutique hotels and how that's gonna fit into what the overlay law says. That, that's a technical legal question. The final question that I have is changing the parking requirements is a very substantial change to this draft law. And will that require you re-advertising the hearing? That's a question for Adam, Adam because when during the public hearing process you end up making a major change in proposed legislation, it does require re-advertising. Thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you, Susan. Anyone else you'd like to speak? Uh, Mr. Reese, are you speaking uh, on behalf of the applicant or? Yeah, yes, yes. I, you know, I'm not speaking for myself, the applicant. Um, Look, we, you know, you, you can you can speculate all sorts of different scenarios until the cows come home, and this is not the way you do land use uh, legislation or planning. Um, this thing has been, you know, it, there's a lot of thought that went into this law when it was drafted. Uh, it was also a lot of thought went into the fact that the, that the the proposed project that's is you know precipitating. The need for the law is is what uh, is 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 driving a lot of the text. So let's be upfront and honest about it. Um, yes, the the, the I, I, under the overlay we can the there is a uh, uh, flexibility for the planning board to 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 uh, to uh, reduce some of the area and bulk requirements otherwise required. Well, let's just get that all out there. Uh, you have a project, it's a very good project in a spot that would be dynamite for the town, uh, in a spot that's gonna, not going to have any impact whatsoever. I don't want to speculate what's going to go on in the Soundview property, if anything, at this point. I don't know that you've got the project in front of you anymore, whether you lost it, um, what's going on with it. So let's not hold up this project on, basic, on, on speculating on what may happen on another project in the future. If you do this, if, if, if you can't move on something like this, as, 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 as I, I think is very straightforward as this law and this application, hopefully, uh, I think we're going to be in a lot of trouble in the future. So I, I'd implore you to just, you know, let, let's, and I, I appreciate the concerns. Don't, I'm not belittling anything that Susan's saying. I appreciate the concerns. Uh, but everything has a, can, you, can, you can speculate about everything and anything. Until the cows come I home, I think and we realize we're being purpose. we're being charged with the law, not the individual project, which is where. Mr. Right, and, Siegel, and again, I think you're, you're going to find out. You got you put your faith in the planning board. The planning board, you know, is is, is you have you have Absolutely, excellent but, planning board. This you're you're, you're so beating just, the just, horse. Just, right. just a question, Mike. Um, the the food area upstairs, the rooftop bar. How much yeah. square footage is that going to be? I, I, off the top of my head, I don't know. But I mean, the ca the ca calculus went into this. You know. Just, just. I, I, what is it? Uh, how much? Twenty nine hundred. Twenty nine hundred right. square feet. Twenty nine hundred square feet. What was Huckleberry? Anybody know? More than. Right. Right. Yeah, and, and when it was it was a hot uh, spot from what I'm reading. Yeah, when it was that, uh, it, it went through a lot. Of, it went through rattlesnake. What was the other one? Hamburg hamburger or something or other? Or yeah. Hanover Grill. No, there was another one in between. Like uh, golden, golden sperm. And, and, and if I have to talk. All I'm saying is, guys, just take a look at your your downtown Heights area and how, the, the amount of parking that you have available for events that we have. Look at San Gennaro brings in 
thousands and thousands and thousands of people into so, town. We don't have a problem. So, so no, but my point is, is that you know, Huckleberries is much larger, and 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 I, I I understand. I see Susan's point about the parking, um, but you know, you you're really you're not comparing two of the same things. Huckleberries was a a venue where very popular bands came out of. I mean, it's so. This is, I think, going to be more of a lounge and a rooftop kind and of area. The, the other I, I don't thing, think it's the same thing. Yeah, and the other thing is that... And looking around, I don't, I don't really see today uh, a parking problem in Yorktown. No. And so, you know, in, in, to, to address Susan's point, when and if we do have a parking problem in Yorktown, um, we, we could look at it then, or we could anticipate that when we get a little closer to a potential parking problem in Yorktown, but I don't see that in the foreseeable future from one project or two. And, and again, I also want to you know, just further emphasize the fact that the proprietor of the business has an interest in making sure that they have ample accommodations for the patrons so they have a successful business. They dial that in. Well, Mike, so I, you know. all I can say is I challenge anyone to go into downtown after the meeting and tell me they had a problem finding a parking spot anywhere right because it just doesn't exist and right? I, 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 I I really urge you to at this point to go ahead with the law as drafted so it can be passed tonight so we're not rehearing things or re-noticing things and we're going to go on into October November and probably to 23 24 on this one I, I just really right. I think the law was carefully vetted carefully engineered it's going to be a great project, and I think the, I, I appreciate the concerns. I think that you've got to understand that some of them are very speculative, and they don't have—they're not rationally based upon what's in front of you. So. Thank you, Mr. Grant. Anybody? Can we just before Susan? No. If, is there anybody else who wants to speak on the public hearing? Let's just give them a fair, fair shake, Susan. Okay. Anybody, All right. Anybody else who wants to speak? I'm just seeing you, Matt. Uh, All it was right, just Susan, go for it. Just one other thing I, I wanted to say. Um, last week, Mr. Grace kept saying there's a sense of urgency. Do it, do it, do it quickly. We don't want to lose this project. And I'm, again, I'm not making comments about the specific project, the specific project that he's representing. And even tonight, he's saying close the hearing and vote for it tonight. We knew that there was going to be a boutique hotel back in 2020. That was when the first when the first information came presentation to the town board and the planning board. Throughout 2021, when the overlay law was being discussed and there was going to be a boutique hotel and the need for some language for a boutique hotel, okay, nothing was said. Nothing, nothing came forward, okay. The, the boutique hotel, the, the overlay law was passed in December. It was advertised in November, passed in, in December, okay? But Mr. Grace waited until April to present some particular, some, some particular language. He could, have, he could have brought that in in January and you could have dealt with this and, and worked it out. So I think his concern about the expediency thing just doesn't ring true because his, he, his client delayed, even though he knew that there was going to be a boutique hotel and there was going to be a need for a definition and, and regulations guarding it. So I just urge you to be cautious. And he says it's carefully vetted. Well, it wasn't carefully vetted because had it been, you would have passed it last week after with, with the parking at 1,600 1 and you're, even your planning director is saying that, that doesn't work. And one to 200 is good. And I'm questioning, I think you need some more information, you know, even about that. So I urge you to do more thinking. And again, I would like to hear a comment about the, how this special permit would apply to the Underhill Farm thing. That seems to be, everyone's ignoring that. Okay, I'll, okay. I'll address it. Okay. They're I, two I, very different projects. An inn is different than a boutique. I want you to think, if you've ever been to Old Sturbridge, Massachusetts, the Sturbridge Inn much different concept which is which lends itself to this property but we're not looking at a project susan we're looking at a law no no we're looking at a law and yeah. and the planning board gets the project and the planning board sits there and then also as someone who sat in the seat upstairs i'm sure you realize that when something finally gets down to this ta down to here to this room does not mean that that was the first time it was broached or brought up 
with our departments and our department heads and our and our legislators. So you know what you you are getting stuck in quicksand right now, and and you you are looking for every single thing to be explained out that has to go through planning. That's why they exist. I don't think it's so, an issue. I'm sorry. No, I, I, I'm sorry, but but you're 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 going back and forth with pro project that's not even on the books, that nothing's come in on, and you want an explanation on how we don't even know if that's going to come. So how can I give you an explanation on how it's going to affect something that we haven't seen? It's it's just you know. And there. I'm a little confused. We haven't seen the Underhill Farm Plan is more advanced than than. Where the, where where was the in plan? On? That right now they're not even sure. If it is a re it is billed as a region as a regional inn, and let's talk language like a hotel. There's a hotel, and there's a boutique the, hotel, and how how you distinguish the, there it. There are definite differences. Though. We don't. Then, then how can they do Underhill Farm with a regional inn if we don't have something in our code for a regional inn? Won't well, won't, that might be something that needs that to be they need at. to bring up, or, then. or maybe they need to do a special use to go under the boutique. Law. Well, that's but, what I'm. But, I'm asking but, you to comment to to, to say. You're, to you're asking me to comment on a project that hasn't come to fruition. That that's like that's like planning. saying I want you to comment on the winning lottery tickets for next week. I wish I, I could. Know. I wish I could, but they're not there. There's, there's it's not there's nothing. Just to change the subject a little bit, the fact that we didn't pass the law last week, I think, is a tribute to us trying to do the right thing to the town board listening to the public comment which is i think what we're supposed to be doing yeah. and the fact that we didn't pass it and we decided to look into the questions that the public had you make it sound like well that was because we weren't prepared no that was because we were listening to the public and we decided to hold off and get the answers that the public was asking so i think it was a good thing that we didn't pass it last year last week because People had several concerns, and we, 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 are, we are trying to address them, as we should be doing. We should be listening to the public. So the fact that we didn't, the law didn't come, but came down the pike, and we go, like, oh, oh, hey, hey, let me sign it, I don't think that's necessarily a bad thing. It's not. I, 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 I appreciate the fact that you, did, that you did take into account some of the comments that were made last week, and a very, a very significant change and that is a very significant change that you are now cons considering to make ba based on the recommendation of your planning director, which is the, a legal question that I ask for, uh, for the town attorney in terms of legally, when you make major changes in a, in a proposed piece of legislation, do you have to re-advertise it? That's a legal question I, and I'll ask him because I don't think you're ready to vote on anything <coughs> tonight. Well, I, but I, I, don't, I don't know, know that yet. I have a couple of questions for John. Yeah. Ladies and gentlemen, we remember this is a public hearing, so we are we are here just to receive comments from the public. This isn't an open floor debate. Thank you. So, so I appreciate your, your, your. Are you done with your comments to the town board? This is your second time up at the. Yes, th thank you, and I do appreciate the fact that my comments last week regarding the parking that you did pay attention, and it's disappointing okay. that had I not been here to make those comments, that that just might have gotten passed. And you wonder, and that was that was a proposal that was proposed by the applicant that was self-serving for the applicant that accommodated his critical lack of adequate on-site parking. And I wonder how it even got to the point, frankly, of being advertised that way with his language and why it wasn't changed internally before it even got to that. But I won't pursue that point. Thank you. So, Susan, I have a couple so of Susan, questions we, for John. We it's always, we, no, I know. No, I'm answering your question. We always listen, Susan, and we appreciate your comments. Thank you. I, I, Thank you. I, I just, I, 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 I have a question for John. Can I, can I speak with John? Thank you. So, John, in, in, when you're looking at the law and the, and if we look at the Gardenia project and the square footage and all, uh, what kind of, leeway are we looking at with the um, lack of evening business where just about everything other than the Chinese takeout shuts down by 8 p.m. Uh, generally speaking that is always a consideration when we look at for instance when a restaurant comes into a strip mall mm -hmm. 
the times of operation and the differing times of operation. So understanding, for instance, Yorktown Heights and what it looks like after 6 o'clock mm -hmm. is something that's taken into consideration. And, uh, you know, the 50 and 100 requirement is a, an onerous requirement. But we're able to accommodate it because uh, the experience here in Yorktown is that there is available parking f for the overage if if it occurs. Mm -hmm. it's That's a of, hard if. <laughs> right. It's similar to Novacenso restaurant over yes. on the other side. Right. They open up, I forget what time, they're basically a dinner restaurant yes. or a, a light uh, lunch restaurant. Most of the other stores in that particular strip mall are closed. Right. So if they do have an... Like the bagel shop. Right. They close at whatever time they close, but it's early on in the day. So there's ample parking in that right. particular and the, parking And the planning board looked at that years ago and also looked at it when Novacento came back. And years ago, they did apply a hard limit because there was about 40 to 50 percent of the building was being used for restaurant use. And they said that's pretty much going to be the and uh, the cutoff. Novacento, luckily, was within that. Yeah. So So they do look at it hard they take it seriously i just want to remind everybody that the overlay district it does have the flexibility for the planning board to modify the parking under the overlay district right and that 60 percent that susan had mentioned does apply to parking variances and so. that's part of the whole thing with this the overlay going to the planning board that we can tweak certain things yes where we have to yes you know i appreciate it's going to have a swimming pool on the roof or right. uh, you know right and and just to you know, dovetail off a little bit what Michael has been saying. You know, the I, I appreciate what he's saying. This project that we have been talking about is a known quantity. The square footages are known. The amount of parking is known. I'm looking at a future application of this law to other parts of town in other overlay districts. Exactly. Potentially. So I think right. that's why, you know, I'm looking at the minimum parking. But of course, in an overlay district, you have to realize that the planning board can take that down to an appropriate level. This will be a good test case, uh, honestly. So, mm -hmm. yeah, but I don't. I I would imagine if I were an applicant, I I wouldn't want to go in saying, "Oh, it's a good test case." We may or may not. Uh, but of course not. Yeah. So we, we will learn from it. Let me put it yeah. that way. Okay. That's yeah. Can I ask John a question? So just so I understand, let's pretend I'm a civilian now. I live in Yorktown. All right. I've been here 40 years. I think all of that's true. <laughs> so that being said, when you codify something into law like this, okay, and you put in these parking figures that you're plugging in, what you're looking at basically is for a barn grow five spaces in this particular instance, okay, based on your one per 600 feet. Does this hold true to any further people that might apply? I agree 100%. We don't have a problem downtown parking. Not at all. So it's a moot point with respect to that. But my, my thought is, if you get somewhere else, and this is in town law, okay, and someone else doesn't have the same advantages that you have downtown Yorktown, can they then exercise these requirements? You will only be able to exercise the re these requirements specifically that we've been talking about tonight if you are a boutique hotel and you are applying for a special permit providing that it's allowed wherever your property lies. But does the planning department then, the planning board and the planning department, or the town board, whoever the lead agency is in this particular situation, do they then have the right to make specific requests as to that parking that's codified already? Make specific requests to, because it might be a whole different set of circumstances. Under the overlay district, they can modify the parking. But well, what about not under the overlay no. district? No. Say up in Shrub Oak, for instance. No. Okay. That would be a variance in f uh, that the zoning board would have to give. So I, I in think that he's asking, does it set a precedent? Exactly. I, I, I yeah. think, no, it does not set a precedent that, because be my concern is that we know it works well here, but what happens question. when it doesn't work in a particular area? Can somebody say, well, you said one per 200, one per 600 feet? Yes. My, yes. It only works right now. It's not a precedent. It's only a precedent for boutique hotels, which is part of my answer, in an overlay district. Okay, only in an overlay district. Right now, that's where they are only allowed so far. Okay, so for what happens if they're allowed elsewhere? Then there would not be the ability for the planning board to modify that parking requirement. Okay. It would have to go to the zoning board. Okay, thank you. So that, that's the benefit of the overlay district. Okay. In particular, 
in areas such as Yorktown Heights and Jefferson Valley so far with those hamlets that have particular uh, you know, requirements and characteristics. So you have the flexibility to modify these things in order to make that particular use work for that particular spot in that particular area. And it's a great tool. Thank you. Feel better. Thank you, guys. Is there anyone else who wants to speak on the public hearing? Okay. No questions. Hi. If I, if I may, I just, uh, you, know, what, you know, what John's talking, I mean, one of the places that this would work very well, and as written rather than as intended to be modified at this point, would be up in Osceola Lake, and especially the George Roberta property, which is an ideal spot for something like this. And it would be an impetus to creating a whole new you know, hamlet area that, uh, up in Osceola Lake as well. I, 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 I you know, the, uh, Susan, I, I, you know, I, I appreciate your, your, your diligence. I just have to say that I, I do take a little umbrage in the, in the tone. I think there's a lot to be said about the art of communicating ideas. And if you do it, in this, it always seems that it's a little accusatory or saying that somebody has done something untoward or nefarious, and that's not the case. So I think if you just, if you just be careful with your language, we can get a lot along a lot better in the, in the future. So yeah. I, but I, I, I do take umbrage at the idea that anything that we, that we, we weren't diligent, that didn't we work hard, that didn't we invent things, that we, you know, that we, we delayed, or, that's not the case. And I don't want to, need to have to defend myself we, or we my clients. We don't think it was. We've been sitting here and I, we understand. I, I, I think it needs to be said because I, okay. I don't want to fight you, Mr. Grace. I don't want to fight with Ms. Siegel. I'd like to have constructive conversation and I think the tone of the language will help a lot. Just for my own. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Anybody else would like to speak on the public hearing? Hello, Michael Biggs. Just one quick point. One of the reasons why we don't have a parking problem, even at those gigantic peak events like at Jack DeVito Field, is because we're utilizing private parking at the Triangle Shopping Center. And, and you, you know, Veterans Road is filled up, Maple's filled up, and a significant amount of parking is used in that parking lot, and it should not be taken for granted. Thank you. Thank you, Michael. It's a good point. And, and I'll, I'll say, you know, just from the uh, definitely don't take it to, to take it uh, for granted. I look at it as a great advantage that we have of of the excess Absolutely. space, and you know the the ideal would be to see businesses in our town be able to utilize all of that parking. It, I, I I would be so thrilled to say, oh my God, I couldn't find a spot at a restaurant because I know what that means as someone who's run restaurants for all his life. Uh, so. I, I agree. We don't take it for granted, and, but but we should take advantage of what we have and be able to utilize it. Okay. Anybody else would like to speak as for the public hearing? Any other speakers going once, going twice? Uh, I make a motion to close. Town board. Any chance you can just rotate me so we can have a discussion with the town board? Have a Here we go. Well, do we need to close uh, public hearing? Thoughts on next steps for the town board? Are we closing uh, the public hearing? Before we do that, Adam, is there any concern on substantial changes with the proposed amendment? None. Thank you. So back to the town board. Thoughts on next steps? Good with the uh, good with the amendments at this point. Same. I'm sorry, Luciani said same? Yes. Great. Uh, I'd, I'd almost like to look for a happy medium in the parking, but I think that the fact that the planning board will be able to look at it and uh, and have their discretion, uh, I'll be fine fine with uh, with the amendment on it for the uh, overlay. I mean, we, we were looking at at uh, one and six. Now we're looking at one and two. Um, is there a problem with it being in the middle, like the happy medium, one and four, four hundred? Well, I think John and, and uh, Joe beat this pretty good. I asked John after after our last meeting, last we sat the next day uh, to review the the parking questions. I thought they did a good job doing their research uh, on why the 200 was the right landing spot for boutique hotels. Um, and, 
and I, I think that they both work through that together. Uh, John from a, a, a legislative standpoint and Joe from a practical standpoint. And unless they want to correct me, I think they both thought 200 was the, the right landing spot. Okay. And I hope I'm not putting, trying, I'm not trying to put words in their mouth, but I'm just reporting back to you guys what the conversations were. But if they want to correct me, they're more than welcome to take the podium. No, no, no. If, if, if that, if that was and the comment. You com feel like a robot, by the way, just so you know. <laughs> if, uh, if, if, if that's how they uh, arrived to that number, um, you know, I trust their better judgment. So. Yeah. yeah, they use they, they they do their due diligence when it comes to yeah, stuff. Yeah, they like they this. really do. They're good. Yep. Okay. So then so then we do do we want to uh, close the public hearing with the amendments as uh, described? Yes. Yes. Motion okay. closed. Second. We will make a motion. Make motion. motion. We have the motion. I have made the motion to close public second. hearing. All in favor? Aye. 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 Was there a second? Yeah, I seconded. Mm -hmm. <coughs> Any opposed to closing? I didn't hear that. No. And then, uh, how do we feel about adoption? I'm ready to, to adopt. Wait, 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 no, no. John and I have to touch base, make sure it's in final form. Uh, oh. I think you do it. You know, I think you do it at, 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 at a, maybe the next meeting. But we have to touch, touch base on one thing. I thought you said that the number didn't matter; that you could fix it. No, no. You have to. You have to vote on the legislation in its final form. Oh, okay. Um, is there any okay. way to get it to him tonight? So then we will, if you and John can have that on for the next town board meeting, Adam, we'd appreciate yeah, it. Probably not at this not point, this but we're done. Not sure. we're, we're we still done. have Dan. Uh, I believe oh. Dan Ciarcia is here. Dan, and, and it's just a number change. Hearing. Thank you all for your comments. Oh. I do want to also just say, though, that I, I, to Sergio's point earlier, I think the public comment process is very important uh, because uh, it does help pose, pose questions and shed light on issues that maybe we... Uh, I don't want to say overlooked, but could have better managed. Uh, and so I think it's important that we do listen to the public hearing, that we're actively listening in the public hearing, and it produces good legislation. I don't think that it's, uh, I don't think it should be used as a tool uh, to demean the town board in any way, shape, or form. This is why we have public hearings. We want to hear from the public. We want to hear critiques and suggestions, but um, I don't think it has, it, it should be used to uh, make any kind of comments about the lackluster performance uh, of our department heads. And, and so our department heads, I think, do a great job. Um, I think they, they work very hard to make sure that the town of Yorktown uh, is, uh, is managed properly uh, in their respective departments. And, and I think they deserve a lot more credit than they're given. Yeah, and to, to, your, to your point, Supervisor, we take this very seriously. That's why we don't vote on it immediately. And we have the time to digest what we have and to put it into proper perspective, if not in everybody else's minds, in our own minds, to make sure that we are making the, the proper decision on, on certain applications and um, uh, permits, et cetera. Yeah, it's exactly what we should be doing. Hey, uh, Let's move on. Yeah, uh, moving on while I'm here, and uh, I, I just want to know uh, if we can do anything. This is a work session. Um, with the uh, terminus of uh, um, Summit Street. Um, no, we're not taking that up today. Thank you very much. All right. The, uh, the next item that we have, I heard we have Dan Ciarcia here. Yes. Dan. Dan the man. Can you um, pivot me back so I can see the... <laughs> I feel like I need, I'm in a, you know, here, hold on. You should get like an external camera. We're gonna get one of those, one of those lazy Susans, so we can. Uh, no, no pun intended. Susan. <laughs> I heard of Max headroom. I guess we have Max headroom. We have Matt headroom now, now. That's right. That's good. Thank you very okay. much, Mark. All right, Dan. Up down fluoride. Okay. So where we are is the the buildings complete. The uh, all the interconnections to the. Uh, to the 24 inch transmission main are complete. Um, so what it's really coming down to, um, and it's a little frustrating at this point because we're really substantially complete. We, we had a joint waterworks wanted a, to make sure we had um, clear fittings because there, there's the tubing that goes in, and in particular the tubing that, that conveys the uh, hydrofluorocytic acid uh, is, is a nasty <coughs> chemical. So the, the um, containment conduit that that runs through um, 
they wanted to have like a clear fitting so you could view it if there was a breach of the tubing. Uh, unfortunately, those fittings were not easy to get. So the latest update is they, they are due in this week. So once those come in, the subcontractor who does the specialty uh, process piping, which isn't, isn't like a regular plumber, it's, it's process piping is a whole nother thing. He's supposed to return when those come in. So that would really put him either showing up later this week or, or next week to button up all the process piping. Separate and apart from that, um, there was some back and forth on the, uh, the, the programming of the programmable logic controller, which basically runs the show over there in terms of feeding the chemicals and interfacing with the, uh, the uh, supervisory system, the SCADA system at Joint Waterworks. That guy has been kind of difficult to get here. He's, as of today, his representation is he will be here uh, the week of the 22nd. And uh, basically, I, I, I told him I don't even care if he, if he can't get here, we need to upload his program so we can do the final testing so that we know, because I don't want to have a situation where he shows up and then there's some other hiccup that some other somebody else needs to address. I want to see everything working as soon as possible, and that would be the prerequisite uh, to having the health department come and actually see us operate the facility, injecting clean water into the 24-inch transmission main, but to basically put it through all the paces as if it was the, uh, as if we were di dosing it with the hydrofluorocytic acid. So that's where we are, which really puts us at sort of ready for health department testing by the end of the month. So I'm trying to stay on top of everybody to stay on that schedule. And then once, once we get health department approval, we close out with the health department, then we get the chemical delivered and, and then we, we bring it online and be, begin injecting uh, or providing fluoride um, to the residents of Yorktown. Okay, my favorite project. Um, um, there, there's been no water test yet, right? We haven't no. we haven't done a, a clear water test on it, um, and, and 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 not for nothing. Joint Water Works. Did they just have an epiphany with these um, uh, clear fittings? I mean, uh, there's this whole project has been a moving target from from the day we put the key in the door of that old pump house. Um, not your fault, Dan. I'm not, I'm not, I'm no, not, I understand. Uh, you know, who, who is, who has to come now with the, for, for the, uh, I guess the injection system of the, uh, the acid, the, fl the fluoride. Well, the, uh, technically actually the tubing is all hooked up and right. ready to go. It's, it's the containment system. Okay. So we've kind of got to open it up and just repipe it and, and put these, um, clear fittings on so you can observe whether there's any leakage i can understand that um but with with the the um you said there was is it part the person has to come from the injection system to make sure his equipment is working properly is no, that the one a, that you're having trouble not, getting no no it's it's not a um a vendor related issue it's basically it's, it's straight up piping oh you okay. know but it it's you know it's not typical plumber stuff yeah all right, so. Um, Although, if he doesn't come back, we'll make it, you know, it's just got to, at this point, it's just got to end. Yeah, yeah. yeah. It's just got to be over. Um, okay, this is, uh, so we're, we're looking maximum probably two weeks out, minimum a week. Yeah, I mean, it's, you know, like I say, the end of the month seems to be where it comes together, and then hopefully we get the health department the beginning of September to do the testing. It would like be nice to have all interested parties there at this point in time so that before the test, we take a, a, a hard look at every piece of equipment that's there, make sure when you throw the switch, all the lights light up, all the valves open, all the, you know, have all the interesting part, parties there for how long could it take? A couple hours. Right, and, and that's my, my um, reason why the control guy kind of becomes critical because that's the guy I want yeah the control guy like he's he's the wizard right yeah. so it's like you know you can't it's like you got to just 
you know, maybe it's not running perfect, but I want to see all the different pieces functioning so that if something ain't working right, I want to know it before that day that he shows up, only have him say, geez, I wish I could do this, but whatever, something ain't working right. I wish I knew that. Yeah. So I, I want to get to that place sooner than later. Yeah. What, what, it, is he just bogged down? He can't get there, or he's just difficult? Yeah, and, and he, he wants to be there for it, but uh, basically at this point I'm telling him, you know, we can open up a virtual private network, upload your software, get it running, and even if it is not running right, that's fine. Like I said, I just want to see everything go. You, I, I, if it's running wrong, that's fine. We're only playing with water. Right, <laughs> you correct. Know, it's nothing, nothing bad's going to happen. Somebody might get wet. That's about it exactly, with that. Exactly. That's the, the, the downside. So, it, 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 like, like I said, is he just being difficult or is he just... I, I think it's a, it's a scheduling issue. And, you know, I think these, these guys like to do things the way they need, like to do them. But, mm -hmm. you know, at this point, that's fine. Except we are where we are. And it's just time to, to wrap forward. this up. Yeah. <clears throat> Let's, let's lead and get this thing done. Yeah. I'll be retired. <laughs> All right, any other questions for Dan on this, uh, on this project? No. All right, we appreciate the update. Right, Thanks, Dan. Thanks, Dan. Thanks for moving me. <laughs> don't, don't, don't mean to beat you up. I just, I, you, you know. <laughs> All right, we're going to go to resolutions. Uh, we have... A resolution for the, the SWIP at 322 Chestnut Court. Uh, we need to amend the resolution as written uh, at, to add a condition requested by the planning board okay. prior to the supervisor signing the plans uh, that ensures that the uh, landscaping treatment for the giant wall and details on the fence are provided to the planning board. Is that correct, John Tagater? Yeah, that's correct. It's pursuant to our the review in December and the July 12th memo. So landscaping plan and details of the fence, really. And that's been shared yeah. with the applicants, of mm -hmm. course, right? Excuse me? Been shared with the applicant? At the December 20th meeting, yeah. Okay. Mm -hmm. Yeah. We just need to we're gonna amend to include that as a condition to be met prior to the supervisor signing plans. But we did go out for a site visit. We spoke with the homeowner. We spoke with several of the neighbors. And uh, we appreciate everyone's patience with us. So we'll entertain a motion. So moved. Second. All in favor? Aye. 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 Any opposed? No. Motion carried. Next, we're going to accept the conservation easement agreement for Atlantic Appliance. We'll take the rest in collectively. Uh, we're going to authorize the Yorktown Police Department to purchase two 2022 Ford Police Interceptor SUVs from the Westchester County contract. We're going to authorize the comptroller to process the following payout at separation. Uh, this is for Dan Wolzeski as he moves on uh, from the Parks Department. Uh, authorize the comptroller to process the following payout of retirement of Lieutenant John Yulio. Authorize the superintendent of highway to purchase two 2024 Freightliner 114 SD Cab Classics. Authorize the comptroller to process a budget transfer from the highway fund balance to the highway equipment line. We're going to authorize uh, a budget transfer, uh, let's see, for a drainage project at Curry and Douglas from the, uh, you can see there, a $22,000 transfer to the highway drainage line. We're going to authorize the release of an escrow deposit to Jason A. Levy, and we're going to authorize the release of an escrow deposit to Scott D. Perry. We're going to authorize the town clerk to advertise bid for the Yorktown Courthouse Plaza renovation. And uh, let's see here. We have the one, uh, one here from the comptroller to authorize a budget transfer of $14,500 from the general funds capital contingency to the town board special projects for the purchase and installation of a monument dedicated to those who served in the war on terror to be added to Patriot Park. And we have a motion. No so move. Second. All in favor? Aye. 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 Oh, Any opposed? <laughs> and if there's no other business before the board, we will adjourn and wish oh, everyone all the, all, back at the podium. Yes, Dan. Just one question. Um, 
We did get the bids in yesterday for the town hall entrance. So I did provide a um, uh, resolution to award that to A. DeVito and Sons. So yeah, we, we have questions on that, Dan, that, that we need to talk to you about. Okay. All right. Just want to make sure it didn't okay. slip through the cracks. Thank you. Thanks, Dan. Thanks, Dan. Thanks, Dan. All right, everyone. Motion to adjourn. The rest of your summer. Second. Good and night. We'll see everyone in September. We'll have a motion to adjourn. Right. Already done. We're ahead of you. There we go. <laughs> My robot's not keeping pace. What can I say? Aye. Aye. So this is our last town board meeting for until, until September? September.